Hello, this is Richard Diatley for PE.com. We're in the studio today to talk about Merino Valley and the boroughs. And with me is my editor, John Bender, who is a Merino Valley resident who uh, motorcycles and drives through the uh, roadways in Merino Valley and has some experience with them himself. Uh, John, there's about 150 to 300 boroughs in the area. That is a very fluid estimate because really no single government agency has oversight of them and is charged with counting them. But what have your, some of your experiences been over the years? Well, it's the craziest thing, Rich. I moved to Merino Valley about 13 years ago, and I saw the signs that showed burrows crossing the road, and I didn't believe it until one evening I was coming uh, home on Retchie Canyon Road, which connects Merino Valley with Colton, and I came across a herd of them on the road. And uh, after that, I always made sure to drive a little slower on Retchie Canyon Road just because I didn't want to hit one. And then they are actually in Moreno Valley in the neighborhood up there. I've come across on Retchie Canyon, come down on uh, Hecock near the Methodist Church, and there have been a group in the road. And the difficulty in seeing them is that they're gray. They almost match the asphalt, the street, and so suddenly you're on these things. They're large animals, and they don't move quickly when they're in the road. Right, and this has uh, been spurred by, uh, there was an accident on Monday in which a motorcyclist struck a burrow, the burrow died, the motorcyclist, police said, suffered a broken arm. In 2005, a motorist died in a collision with a burrow, and the animal also died in that incident. And we've been sort of looking over uh, the last day or so, who actually has oversight? And we find that there are multiple jurisdictions uh, between San Bernardino County, Riverside County Animal Control, Moreno Valley Animal Control, and uh, overlayered with that to some degree the State Department of Fish and Game. No one is actually in charge of the entire herd or o oversight of the entire herd, and they're not owned. They're called undomesticated rather than wild animals, and that also affects their uh, regulation and oversight. It's against the law to, uh, to uh, sell them, to commercialize, use them, to put it in plain language, to turn them into dog food or human food. Uh, it's also against the law to feed water or do other things that will cause them to lose what's called their natural fear of humans. That law seems to have some shades of interpretation. And John, you probably have seen over the years people feeding them well, on if the you, roadside. If you, right, Rich. If you come along Retchie Canyon Road or drive up by Box Springs Mountain, and you'll often see people getting out of their cars to either take pictures of the burrows or to walk up and try to get close to them. And they, they still are pretty skittish. But one time, I admit, I broke that law myself by feeding them some carrots from inside my car. And, but some people do that with some regularity, I understand, in that area. It looks to me, there are a couple places where it looks like uh, water troughs are filled up for the burrows. Okay. And so uh, there is this problem of the interaction between the burrows and humans, sometimes very pleasant. People out there, there are a lot of property, ranch uh, and horse property owners who like the animals to be on their property. They keep the weeds down. Uh, there's also just a great tolerance in an in a, uh, animal-friendly atmosphere that's out there. But there are also these uh, problems as they interface with humans and uh, a unresolved at this moment. That's what, not what we're here for. But we just thought we'd bring you up to date with what is going on out there in the area as the population increases. More people, especially, use Retchie Canyon Road as a shortcut from the inland freeways. They're often crowded in the evening, especially. Right. And what I would say is people should go a little slower on that road because you cannot see those burrows. They often are right alongside the road and then they suddenly will dash out in front of you. That's true, and there's an enticement for a road like that. It's windy, it's curvy. Uh, sometimes there can be a lot, of, especially later at night, a lot of open space on it. You might feel the enticement to maybe go a little faster, enjoy the drive. That would not be a good idea on this road. Any road to go to violate speed limit, but especially here. Uh, we've talked to one person who uh, gave her account of a couple times where uh, there's gullies that are dark, intersect the road, the animals have stepped out. She avoided in both instances striking one, but it was close. And I think that's a good way to end it, just to use caution on the roadway. Remember that there's no real oversight of these animals and also that it actually is against the law to do things like feed them, water them, and treat them in a way that will cause them to lose their fear of human beings. For PD.com, this is Rich Diatley. John Bender, thank you very much. Thank you, Rich.